What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are back with another tennis video and as you can see, I finally got me some new equipment. It's still kind of trash, but it is what it is. Anyways, biggest tennis upset of all time. Well, not really, I don't know why people say that. It is an upset. It is world number 127, Luca Nardi, a 20-year-old Italian prodigy. Can you say prodigy? I guess you can, he beat Novak. Uh, beating Novak Djokovic, third round, in it Wells, 2024, two sets to one, upset. Um, It is an upset, but... If you would ask me before the tournament, run to my head, Sebastian, what does Novak do? Be unbiased. I'd say he either loses to Daniel Medvedev in the semifinal, or actually even maybe to Hugo Umber or Tommy Paul in the fourth round, because both of those players are actually really in form. And it would have been a Tommy Paul matchup. Now, that did not happen because Luke Kennard decided to play really well. And he did beat Novak 2 sets to 1. And some people are saying that Novak is completely done. Some people are saying relax, chill, whatever. And actually, I did a poll on this. Link to the poll will be down in the description box. Feel free to vote and um, publicly state your opinion on Novak's future. Now, um, there's a couple of things that kind of come to my mind because, uh, because of the situation. One is that... Um, we kind of ignored the fact that Novak, well, we didn't ignore he's getting older, but we kind of ignored that he's sort of a part-timer. now. I think this whole COVID situation, the visa ban, the, the throwing out of the country, the tournaments not being held, whatever, nicely hit up the fact that Novak has really a couple of big dead spots in his season, like Mar February, March, April, Coaster Australian Open is completely dead. Like the tournaments like Indian Wells, Miami, Monte Carlo, even Madrid to a certain extent are completely dead when it comes to Novak. Uh, Rome is the last tournament. You can clearly see that he does well in Rome. Like his form is going like this and then he picks at Roland Garros. Wimbledon is great. Then he doesn't play Canada. Cincinnati is usually good because it's a prep for US Open. And then the October Asian swing does not exist at all. And if those tournaments would have been actually held, I don't think that Novak goes at all. So um, it, it is nicely hidden up that Novak is basically a part-timer. So um, as you can see, I, I did not have Novak winning this tournament. And it's clear because if you go back in time and look at Novak's results at the Indian Wells, he hasn't won this tournament in 2016. And okay, we cannot just say win or lose, whatever. But he's not like making finals or semifinals or whatever. He's barely playing. But when he does play, he's pretty trash. Like if you go back in time, okay, 2017, 18 injuries, whatever. I think he played in 17. He lost to Curious one tournament. I'm not really sure. I don't really remember. In 18, I'm not sure he played. Uh, I know in 19 he played, and this is like peak Novak 2.0. He just won Wimbledon. He just won the US Open. Um, he just won the Australian Open. He is going for number four, the Novak Slam 2.0, two months later from that period of time. And he does really poorly at Indian Wells or Miami. And those results pretty much cost him the year end number one because he did really poorly on those two tournaments that he used to do really well when he was in his late 20s, basically. Um, if you go to 2020, of course, the tournaments weren't held. In 2021, he was... I think injured. Yeah, he was injured uh, post Australian Open. In 22 23, he could not play because of the visa. And uh, in 24, he did poorly at Indian Wells. And if I would have to make a prediction for Miami, I think he does slightly better. I think he will be pissed that he did that poorly at Indian Wells, but he will also be aware that that's not a goal, right? That's not a goal. And now we kind of touch another problem which is that Novak has been chasing Federer and Nadal for the you know previous 90% of his career. And right now he's on top. Like he is pretty much the undisputed goat in every meaningful statistical category. Like he has 416 weeks. Number one is going to be at least 420. That's 110 more than Roger Federer and more than double that uh, Rafael Nadal has. He has uh, eight season ending number ones. He has 24 majors, and yes, in theory, Nadal can win a French Open, and maybe this, and maybe that, but Nadal is not catching him. So he's the number one in almost every major statistical category. He actually has four ma 40 Masters tournaments, which is four more than Rafael Nadal's 36. So there is no catching. And right now, I think Novak kind of suffers from the lack of motivation, lack of goals to chase. Yes, you can always say, well, I want to win 10 Wimbledons. I want to win 14 Australian Opens to tie Rafael Nadal. I want a quadruple career golden master slam whatever the hell but it's not really realistic that's just like you know piling up on your records that you already set it's not like you're chasing somebody else's record so i do think that there is a significant lack of motivation i think uh he there's a part of him that 
pretty much wants to kind of retire and chill with his family. There's also a part that wants to play, but uh, he's definitely never going to do well in these sort of dead season tournaments like Indian Wells, Miami, because that's not what it matters for him. What matters for him is how he does in Roland Garros and Wimbledon in the Olympic Games on the US Open tournament. Now, if he goes into the French Open and plays like shit and he loses in the third round to, to Lorenzo Musetti or somebody like that, you'll be like, Okay, maybe he's done. If he goes into Wimbledon and he loses to, I don't know, Sebastian Corda in the third round, you'll be like, man, is he done? That's kind of bad. And then if he fails at the Olympics, you're like, okay, this guy's probably done. But I do not think that that will happen. And the key thing here is that actually we won't know. Because I do not expect him, I think he would maybe do better in Miami, but like a semifinal or something like that. I don't think he's doing well at Monte Carlo. I would actually be surprised if he plays at Monte Carlo. Because if you look at Monte Carlo, like statistically, that's the worst tournament for him. But even when he was at peak, uh, let alone now, I mean, he's losing to guys like Evans, Dan Evans, Lorenzo Musetti. I think he lost to, yeah, he lost to Medvedev, I think in 2019. Yeah, he lost to Medvedev in 2019 on clay in Monte Carlo quarterfinals. Yeah, I remember that. So I just, I did not expect him to win there. I did not expect him to do well in Madrid. I think he's going to escape a clay masters. Uh, he's probably going to play Banya Luka. Maybe he wins that tournament if he gets a favorable draw. But last year he lost to Dusan Launic. Launic, round. What? Why am I? Lajovic. Dusan Raonic. What the fuck am I talking about? Dusan Lajovic. Jesus. I did a poll on Milos Raonic, so I guess that's why I confused them. Um, anyways, uh, what I'm trying to say here, without butchering uh, tennis players' names, is that Nowak in the following two months will simply not do that well because uh, there is just no incentives. There is just no motivation. And you can say, well, Novak, you're losing the number one spot. Yannick Sinner is right there. But he has 420 weeks at number one. Like, he doesn't really care. I mean, certainly he doesn't want to be ranked like 17 or something like that. But until he's in the top four, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really, because there are four good guys right now in tennis. Plus, wherever if he's off. But there is four basically major favorites in tennis. And it, it doesn't really matter if you rank number one or number four. You're pretty much getting the same draw. Um, anyways, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that it's perfectly normal. Like, if you look at Federer in 2017, it's not like Federer was playing 20 tournaments. He played, like, 11, 12 tournaments. He completely skipped the whole clay season. Like, this guy was like, okay, I'm just going to focus on this tournament. And he was really efficient. That was the great thing about that season for Federer, because he was really efficient. He wasn't, like, losing to randoms. Um, but he played, like, 11, 12 tournaments that year. So um, I, I don't think that uh, is, is a surprise. I don't think that the tennis schedule was meant to, uh, was created for a 35-year-old to be uh, playing really well for the whole season. I mean, it wasn't created for anybody to play well during the whole season because if you look at Alcaraz's results in the past couple of tournaments, like um, you're like, whoa, what the hell is going on? Is this guy washed? Well, it's perfectly normal to not you know, win every single tournament that you participate in because you're going to be facing five, six, seven other guys. And, you know, it's one, in, mathematically speaking, it's one in 64 and 128. To win a tournament. So this is perfectly normal. Uh, personally, if you would ask me, what is Nolak's career going to look like? So I would say that he probably does trash in uh, Miami. He skips Monte Carlo. He plays in Banja Luka, Madrid, and uh, Rome. Or is the other way. Maybe he plays Monte Carlo, skips Madrid, whatever the hell. Um, I think he's going to be maybe low-key a semi-finalist finalist in Rome. I think that's going to be a really good um, sign if he's going to play well or not uh, on the Roland Garros tournament. Because even last year, I know he lost in the quarterfinals to Holger Rune, but that was by far the best performance that he had uh, on the clay courts before the Roland Garros. Now, um, it's going to be interesting because Novak is in a tough spot when it comes to schedule. Like, he goes from clay to grass to clay. And what is more important, winning a major, winning the Olympic Games? Went to peak. So, I mean, he kind of has to do like a triple peak now. Peak at Roland Garros, peak at Wimbledon, peak at uh, Olympic Games, and then whatever he does at US Open. So, I don't think he's winning the French. Maybe he does like a semifinal. He always reaches like the semifinal. I think he reaches the semifinal. Uh, maybe lose to like Alcaraz or something like that, center. 
Uh, I think he wins the Wimbledon. I still, I still believe in that. I think there's just not a lot of guys who can beat him on grass. I think Alcaraz can beat him on grass. I think Sinner can, in theory, beat him on grass. Fedev, if he plays that well, although he has a weird returning position for grass, it's just never going to work. Um, I think Novak is way too skilled and crafted for grass for to let Daniel Medvedev beat him. Uh, he's going to be taming Hubert Hurkacz were catches of the world successfully. So I think he has a pretty good shot to win Wimbledon. And then Olympics, man, I don't know. Like, I just do not see Novak winning the Olympics. It's the worst format. I know he's going to be ready. He's going to be motivated. But I just think there is just this weird pressure of Novak Djokovic and playing for Serbia Olympics, hasn't won the gold medal, one thing that, that's missing. I, I said in one of my videos, I think, or one of my community posts that Novak actually has a better chance at the 2028 Olympics. Like, I honestly, I honestly believe that because there's going to be no pressure. He's going to be 40, 41 years old. Um, if, I mean, he can skip any, everything, every single tournament that year and just prepare for the Olympics. Like, fuck it. He can play challengers. Like, it, it, it won't matter. Like, he can play challengers if he wants to prepare for the Olympics. So I think that's going to be actually more favorable than, uh, the Paris Olympics on clay. And then the U.S. Open, um, it's a difficult tournament for to win. Uh, he got a nice draw last year, so I don't know. But yeah, definitely. And one more thing, um, I just kind of remember Daniel Medvedev saying this about uh, Novak because uh, he did an interview after one of his losses, uh, I think in Dubai. I think yeah, in Dubai. And he said like he felt that he was missing like five percent of hunger. And he said that Novak last year in Dubai kind of did the same, or he felt that Novak kind of felt the same because he beat him 6 4 6 4, and Novak was kind of flat, maybe not 100% into the match. And that does, ha- that does happen because even if you're like 27, 20 years, 28 years old, you're not going to be 100% hungry all the time. And a lot of these matches are about guts, about hunger, about how many balls do you chase, not about your forehands and backhands and serves. And there's going to be a couple of really long, grinding points. And if you're not 100% into it, if you're not pissed off and angry and motivated and all that, and what is that? He needs to interact with the crowd. He needs to get pissed off. He needs to get into this. If it's just like flat and like, okay, I'm the GOAT, whatever. I'm just hitting the balls. I mean, it's just, it's never going to work out that well. So... Yeah, that's what Daniel Medvedev says. I think he's completely right. And uh, when it comes to the end of the season, I think he definitely skips Shanghai. I don't think he. I don't think he ever plays Shanghai ever again. And then season-ending tournaments. I mean, I guess maybe he can win. I don't know. And next year, you know, obviously Wimbledon, whatever, Australian Open, whatever. And I, I guess the, the majors are going to be the main thing if he stays healthy um, for the rest of his career. Um, if I would make a final prediction, how many me- weeks at number one? 447. How many Grand Slams? 27. It's a nice number. Um, how many Masters tournaments? 41 or 2. I think he wins one more pass. Uh, 42. Let's say 42. And uh, how many tournaments? I think he wins like 106. Maybe he's going to chase Jimmy Connors. That's like, that's another record that he does not have, right? He does not have 109 titles. And first of all, he doesn't even have 103 that Federer has. So he can chase that for sure. But I don't think that's like a big record. So anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Maybe he has 110. But um, if I'm making a prediction, 106. Okay, whatever. Anyways, um, hopefully this video is higher quality than it used to be. Let me know in the comment section. And uh, that's it.